Matthew. Uh, sorry we had some technical difficulties last week and couldn't get the study up every day. Um, but wanted to show you this map of what it looked like in Jesus' day to be in Jerusalem, um, which is down here, right? And then he was, of course, born in Nazareth, which is up here. And now let me see if I can figure out how to delete that. Um, okay, so Command C, my daughter tells me, it deletes it. So say hello, say hello, Elizabeth. Hi, we're working on this. <laughs> Elizabeth's helped me out with this, so I'm going to say a prayer, and then we will get started. Lord, thank you for Elizabeth being here to help me. Thank you for everyone who's checking this Bible study out. Uh, we we again live in difficult times, so we need your help. And guide us through this time and guide us through this study this day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so last time I left you in the Gospel of Matthew, we were talking about Jesus' baptism. And the big question is, why was Jesus baptized? Uh, primarily, we understand baptism as the forgiveness of sin. So if Jesus was baptized, uh, then it he did not have sin. So his baptism has to be more than just for the forgiveness of sin. Well, it turns out our baptism is for the forgiveness of sin, but it is more than just the forgiveness of sin. Uh, baptism has other aspects to it. For one, baptism is a welcome to the community, welcome into the family. Just like when you have a child, I always tell people you don't wait until they can decide for themselves whether you bring them home from the hospital and make them part of the family. They are all, You make them a part of the family right when they're born. Uh, so it's a welcome to the family. It's a right and an initiation. It's also an outward sign of what God's doing in someone's life. So let's talk about Jesus' baptism. If you remember, this is where John the Baptist was operating out of, this little idea place here called Qumran. Now, Qumran... Um, Qumran was where John the Baptist was, and we're going to have to edit this and un okay. I think it's Command Z. All right, it's all right. Command C. She Z. tells Z. Okay, she's telling me Command Z. You know, when your dad is almost fifty years old and didn't grow up with computers, for a fifteen-year-old, this is pretty frustrating. So, welcome to our life right now in quarantine. So. Uh, John the Baptist was working out of this area, most likely. That is the, of course, um, the Qumran community there. You can see that. There was an Essene community there, uh, and John the Baptist was an Essene, which is a sect of Judaism. They were very ascetic. They, this is down in the wilderness, by the way. Um, the distance between here and here is not that far, right? Um, so you can, it's not that far as far as on the map or as the crow flies, but the distance is great. It's kind of like the different, I'm going to go over here and draw now and see if I can. It's kind of like this is up here is where Jerusalem is. And down here is where the Dead Sea is. Okay. Um, it's a huge drop off, huge drop off. Uh, I see, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. So uh, it's a big elevation change difference. So uh, to get there was difficult, to get there was hard. Now, if you remember, uh, we talked about in Matthew's gospel how Jesus was the embodiment of all of Israel, right? This whole area here, this is what we know of Israel. If you remember from uh, our study, when Jesus and his family fled, they fled from Bethlehem, down into Egypt, um, and then they came back later on, right? And they went all the way up to Nazareth, which is right there. Um, so Nazareth's right here. So that that what's interesting about that is if you remember the story of Israel, is they travel from somewhere in this area here. Uh, Jacob has the twelve, his 12 sons, 12 tribes of Israel. They go down into Egypt, right? They go down into Egypt. Then they come back uh, 400 years later with Moses into the wilderness uh, and dwell over here for some time before finally they cross 
into the land of, of Israel right here. And where did they cross? They cross at Jericho. And when they cross, go back and read the first couple of chapters of the book of Joshua in the Old Testament. And when they cross, it's reminiscent of crossing the Red Sea. Um, the, the priests step feet, they, when their feet begin to hit the water of the River Jordan, the, the waters part. They're carrying the Ark of the Covenant. They cross from the wilderness, this area in here, to, and, and maybe you remember, they, they take Jericho. And maybe you remember that from Vacation Bible School. Um, they, you know, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. They walked around the, the walls of Jericho and shout and scream and, sh and all this kind of thing, just like God tells them, and the walls come tumbling down. Why does this matter? Well, think about what that meant. meant. They went from over here, which is wilderness, over here, which is promised land. Um, so when Jesus is baptized... Uh, there are a couple of sites historically that are recognized as possible sites. One is up here near the right where the River Jordan comes out of the Sea of Galilee, right, right in here. The other is down here near Jericho, right in here. So why does that matter? Well, it, what's interesting is this one up here in the northern part was, uh, was the one they used to take tourists to. Um, a long time ago, um, it, it's still recognized as a possible site, but it's it's the most likely site is probably not up here. Most likely site is down here at Jericho, uh, because this is where John was doing his ministry. So most likely, this is exactly where Jesus went to, even though he had to travel all the way from Galilee down to down to Jericho in this area. Um, it's most likely that's where Jesus was baptized. And if you think about how in Matthew's gospel that Jesus embodies everything that Israel does, when Jesus is baptized, what is, what's happening there? And here's, this, here's one of the reasons I think that Jesus' baptism um, means so much, at least for me, is when Jesus is baptized, what would have physically happened with his body? It would have been laid back into the River Jordan, and his body would have physically parted those waters. Um, Jesus is, in a sense, retracing those steps again for Israel, of Israel, and embodying Israel. And, and so Jesus' very presence provides for us the way that goes from the land of wilderness, you know, over here, to the land of promise over here. Again, this is this right here. This is wilderness. This is being lost. Over here, this is promise. It's being found. Um, and so what is think about Jesus' baptism in that way. Jesus embodies when he is baptized the difference between being lost and being found. Uh, and, and in that way, um, I like to think of it that way because it, it, it gives me a good reason why Jesus was baptized, because he wasn't baptized for the forgiveness of sins, yet his baptism for us is for the forgiveness of sins. His, bapti his baptism for us means that we can go from over here, the t place where we're lost, over here to the place we're found, from the land of being lost to the land of being found because of what Jesus does for us and only through what Jesus does for us. So Jesus is that bridge. He is that one that leads us past and through and over. Uh, without him, we can't go from one place to the other. So that's a, a little bit of what I see in Matthew's gospel. That's a little bit of what I see in Jesus' baptism. It initiates him uh, to begin his public ministry. It, and it does tell us that we are forget, we are baptized for the forgiveness of sins, and it's only through Jesus and what Jesus does that we are able to do that. So thank you for joining me and Elizabeth for my doodles today. I know this has been a little crazy. It's a crazy time. So I hope you're having a good day. 
And she just gave me a look like you won't believe because, yes, I really did that. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, we're going to be back with a, a, a video on Tuesday but um, where we'll take up the next verses of Matthew's Gospel. But until then, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for putting up with my doodles. And thank you for being a part of this study. God bless you and have a great day.